China has a hot new export market turmoil. The eyes of the world are on the Shanghai Composite and on the daily fixing of the renminbi. Sometimes that doesn't make for pretty reading. Martin Wolf is here to tell me his take on it. One possible solution that got put forward in Davos, Martin, was the tighter capital controls. This was the idea from Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Kuroda. Would this work? Is this a plan that can or is this desperate measures? I suspect a bit of both. I mean, China still has exchange controls. It's not a fully liberalised system. It's moving glacially, I think, appropriately to becoming a fully liberalised system. They could tighten the controls. And at the moment, or at least indeed now for quite some months, they've been losing foreign currency reserves at an enormous rate. They've lost almost $700 billion in the last uh, year and a half. Um, and even for China, which has $4 trillion of reserves, or had at the beginning, this is an enormous amount. So they can't really continue to do so. Uh, they're obviously doing it to try and stop the exchange rate from collapsing. We all want it not to collapse because it would create a big deflationary shock for the world. Mm. We really don't need that right now. Um, but on the other hand, they really don't want to continue like this. So what are the alternatives? Well, basically, the, in the short run, the simplest thing is to stop the, the buying by Chinese people of dollars. Mm. And controls would do it. Obviously, we then have to get into the question of why are they buying dollars? Part of it is straight capital flight, I think. Mm. Uh, people are frightened about the anti-corruption campaign. Part of it is a lack of good investment opportunities as the economy slows and they've been investing far too much. And part of it is Chinese corporates trying to, to redeem debt, which they contracted in dollars, and they now realize the dollar's rising, the renminbi is falling, it's getting more expensive all the time. And so this is what's going on, and some of that the People's Bank could stop if they really wanted to. Why is this of, a, of concern to the Bank of Japan, though? Is it the exporting deflation angle that's their real problem, or do they worry about financial market turmoil in and of itself? I think that it's both, and I think that's true for everybody. There's a lot of concern now, pretty obviously, in the markets and among policymakers about what's happening in China, particularly since last summer when we had the sort of first bout of turbulence. It's pretty obvious that China is slowing quite fast, that the authorities aren't completely in control of this process, and among other things, though they're not so closely linked, there's quite a bit of market, market turbulence being generated by China. And part of that is capital outflow and the effects on the currency. And they're particularly concerned with the latter because China is the world's largest trading power, it's the world's largest exporter. If the currency were to collapse and money were really to flood out because people would be desperate to get out as they're losing the value of their currency, that could generate a lot of turbulence in the world, unpredictable. But the world is unbelievably delicate at the moment, mm. as we can see, so that's the last thing anybody wants. And do you think, what sort of message do you think tighter controls would give out? Is it we've got this situation under control or is it we're running out of ideas? Both, I think. Uh, the, everybody understands that the process of integrating the Chinese economy into the world economy, particularly on the financial side, is going to be a very complicated process, very difficult with lots of risks associated with it. And uh, uh, that's partly because China is so huge. It's partly because China has been separate from the world economy on the financial side pretty well, completely. And it's partly because China's going through this huge and complex transition to a liberalized, more uh, deregulated economy, in theory, without this giant investment boom. And if you add these three things together, you could easily imagine, because there's so much debt now in China, and there's so much uncertainty in China, that it could be very, very destabilizing. I've got a sort of favorite number, I mean, there are many other ways of thinking about it, is the annual flow of savings. Each year's savings in China is about, in translating to dollars, is worth nearly $5 trillion. That's almost doubled US savings. Yeah. If that were really allowed out, God knows we what it would do to the world. Yeah. So, Yes, it is a bit of panic, and it is going to be bumpy, and there are going to be processes of liberalization and then reversals. I don't expect the full integration of China, if, if it happens, to happen to be to occur until way into the 2020s. No, no. We've probably got a decade like this in front of us. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if there is a kind of coalescence of views around this Bank of Japan position. Martin, thank you very much. It's a pleasure.